Hey everybody, Erin from The Impatient Gardener down in my basement seed starting area. Um, this area has not changed since last year. Um, I'll put a link to that video if you're curious how it all comes together. Basically, I have two rolling shelves, cheap, the cheap ones you buy, and a whole bunch of lights hanging from them, a heat mat, actually uh, one, two long heat mats. I probably only need one. And uh, I have wrapped the two carts with a mylar uh, backed material. So it's white on one side and then shiny mylar on the inside to help reflected light. And when I'm not standing in the middle of them, I roll them together to sort of maximize the light. That's all been working great. But we have problems down here. I messed up pretty bad. So I've had fungus gnats since day one this year. They've been really bad. Everyone has dealt with fungus gnats. I think uh, anyone who grows plants inside has dealt with fungus gnats at one point. And then the aphids came. I have at least two different kinds of aphids growing down here. And then, as if to say, you're in so much trouble this year, a stink bug showed up. No big deal, I dispatched the stink bug. Uh, but we gotta talk about that aphid problem and the fungus gnat problem. Uh, and I'll show you where they are first, and then I'll tell you how I think I got them. So the first plant that I noticed something funky happening on were these peppers. See these curling leaves? I saw several of those. In fact, I pinched a couple out already. And I thought, something, something is wrong here. So then I started looking. In fact, I brought down a magnifying glass. Let's see if that helps. Oh, I think that does help. So you see these little bumps on the stem? Those are aphids. Those are little green aphids. So I first noticed them there on the pot of pino peppers. Uh, and then I started looking around and I started noticing them on other things. This is that tassel flower has suffered with them a little bit. The foxglove has been suffering with them. That's the major ones that have been affected by, oh, and my lettuce, which is real. This was lettuce I was growing for a container, but I was also gonna put some in the vegetable garden too. Let me see if I can get you some, show you so, some with some decent light on it here. Cause, so here's one. So here's one right at the end of that leaf. So they, ha they haven't been terrible on the lettuce, but they're there. So I've been managing this problem in multiple ways. One, with the fungus gnats, I've been doing these little, you know, sticky things. And then I've also been doing the mosquito bits drench. Um, I'm sure you've seen that before. Uh, you buy these little things called mosquito bits. It's BT, it's bacteria thuringiensis. And you put that in your watering can, let it sit for 30 minutes, and then you use that as a drench in your watering can. Now you won't kill the adults with that. What you do is you kill the larvae, which is more important to get. Uh, the stickers just catch the adults. So fungus gnats are fungus gnats. Like I said, we're all gonna deal with them. The aphid issue though, let's talk about that. Here's where I think I went really wrong this year. I decided to overwinter a whole bunch of plants from outside in here under the lights until I started seed starting. So I brought in, oh my gosh, let me think what I all brought in. A whole bunch of geraniums, uh, that Senecio skyscraper I brought in. I overwintered one of the Colocasia coffee cups under lights. Um, I even brought in things like, um, Oh, I even brought in things like the albutalon, uh, which was bad almost immediately. I brought in purple bell vine, all kinds of things. I also brought in a tropical hibiscus, which without fail, I have aphid issues on every year and put it right down here under lights with everything else. Basically, at the end of the day here, I think it's pretty safe to say that I got either lazy or cocky about what I did to prepare these plants before I brought them in. So I'm pretty sure I brought in aphids and fungus gnats and all of that, all of the fungus gnats could have come from, I did buy a bag of potting mix that was one of last year's and it was really wet and kind of gross when I, when I got it and I, maybe they came from there. But I'm sure they probably came from the things I overwintered too. So in retrospect, what I should have done was be better about my hygiene, plant hygiene, uh, bringing those in in the winter. Um, and you know, that could have involved taking off that top layer of soil, maybe even applying neem oil, um, really uh, flooding those things with, with water and then letting them drain for a couple of days before you bring them in to try to get some of these things out of there. Just generally watching them carefully than I did. That would have gone a long way. 
Um, the aphids are an issue no matter what. I think that, you know, I think those would be hard to catch. What I should have done though was before I started starting seeds down here was take those things that I was overwintering here under lights and get those upstairs or move those somewhere else. Keep those segregated from these sensitive little seedlings. Um, because of course, these things are just a, a f these bugs feast on those little seedlings. So I should have moved that stuff out of the way. Mixing the two was a bad idea when I knew I wasn't starting from a perfect place with those. So that's a lesson I have learned uh, that, you know, in the future, if I'm going to overwinter things under lights, I need to do like a thorough cleaning and disinfecting of the area and get those things out of here before I start seedlings down here. I am certain that is the cause of the aphids. Maybe not the fungus gnats, but for sure the aphids. So what do I do now that I have this problem? Well, one, um, first of all, the fungus gnat thing, I've already talked to you about that. The aphids are really more my concern. I don't deal with a lot of aphids problems in the garden, but if I do, I give them a strong, a strong spray of water and then I walk away and I forget about it for about a week. And there are enough beneficial insects in my garden that most of the time the problem is handled naturally after that. Um, but I don't really have to worry about it too much. Well, there are no beneficial insects here to deal with this, obviously. So uh, this is sort of where your integrated pest management practices come in. So I'm just going onto these leaves and I'm just, I'm just squishing these things, right? I'm just going to find them and manually squish those things. They're so tiny, it, it doesn't matter, but you could certainly wear gloves if it, if it was bothersome to you. So squish them, number one. Next up, insecticidal soap. Um, but you have to be careful with insecticidal soap because anything is tough on a seedling, you know? Any, anything you spray on a seedling, they just don't have a lot of room wiggle room there so i'm using purchased insecticidal soap you can make your own insecticidal soap um, i used to make it with regular soap you can't do that i learned that lesson too you have to use something like castile soap like a pure soap and then you stabilize it with vegetable oil um, there's all sorts of recipes all over the internet but that's basically the recipe um, i actually just bought insecticidal soap because uh, if you don't use your insecticidal soap fast enough when you make it yourself with that vegetable oil, it can go rancid on you. So I just bought a bottle. Um, now you can't even apply that very often, right? Like that's like, I think it's f every four days max, more like once a week. Then when the insecticidal soap fails on me, then we go to the neem oil. I've got a bottle of neem oil too, and I have been using that like sparingly on things. I feel like that's, that's helping quite a bit. Um, but like I'm spraying that on the lettuce. Now, normally I wouldn't do that. Um, and you can, you know, you can use that on vegetable, on food crops, but you have to wash them really well. And generally I just try to avoid even going down that road, right? So that's where I'm at with this stuff. So the next step in all this is that the good news is that most of these things that are having issues are going outside. I put the temporary greenhouses up and I'm moving out any of the cold hardy annuals, um, the foxglove, the tassel flower, the lettuce, what else, the kale, which has actually not been affected by them yet. Those are all moving outside to start the hardening off process in my temporary greenhouses. So that will get the things that are sort of harboring the most of them out of here. My goal at this point is to make sure that I don't end up with a situation where I have aphids on things like tomatoes. Um, I may have to start over with that one set of peppers. I've got other peppers growing. So far, crossing fingers, those things are fine. But I wanna get the main problems out of here. I have moved out most of the plants that I've been overwintering out of this area. Some of them I just tossed, frankly. Um, others I've just moved out of the area and they're just gonna have to limp along where they are. I didn't wanna put them by my other house plants and infect those. They have to just kinda of limp along until it's time for them to go outside. So. Let's get some of these things outside and, uh, and hopefully that'll help. I gave an update on this on Instagram the other day, but this is the purple bell vine that I overwintered. Now I didn't take, I did take cuttings from it. So I do have some plants, but this thing was covered in aphids. Um, just this leaf alone, you can see like at least the woolly kind and the little green kind. They're all over the place. I actually took this whole plant. It's covered in that sticky aphid stuff. I took this whole plant and uh, tossed it out onto um, into our little 
cellar area just to get it away from everything else and i'm just going to toss the whole thing there's there's I'm not going to spend my time bringing this plant back, and I don't think it's possible because it's so bad. So anyways, that's, that was where they really ended up going um, recently. So I think that was harboring a lot of, a lot of things. So I did bring the insecticidal soap out here. So I'm going to give the things that have aphids on them one more really good, one more really good drench with that. That should be good for a while. Everything gets covered up with a thin layer of harvest protection fabric when it comes out here just to help it uh, deal with the light. Um, and also it offers a little bit of protection at night too, but the bigger issue is that it's way brighter out here than it is under those lights. So I feel safe doing the insecticidal soap and then covering them up. Um, I did just want to show you my sweet peas, which have been thankfully um, not affected by this problem. They have all been pinched back. Um, maybe not this guy, he might have gotten missed. Um, they've all been pinched back, but I want to show you just a peek under here. Can you see all those great roots in there? That's just exactly what I want to see is all those roots. And I've just been bottom watering these because um, obviously the roots are reaching that stuff. So I've just been water water, bottom watering these. I will say the color on them is uh, not as deep of green as I would like. So that probably means um, that they need a little bit more, more nutrients because you know they're heavy feeders. So, I'm going to start uh, feeding these probably with a fish fertilizer if I have one um, every time I water them. Um, and I will, and I think I'll still do that from the bottom on those. But anyway, so those have been thankfully uh, immune from the issue now, and they will be very happy to be out into a cooler growing area here. Um, and actually, depending on the weather, we should be able to get these in the ground in not too long, I would say. So lesson learned, I guess. Um, valuable lesson there. Don't underestimate the bugs or don't overestimate your ability to manage them. Uh, I hopefully, I think we'll be able to save everything with this. It's just really a bummer and I will just have to be very vigilant more so than usual. So anyway, I hope your seed growing is growing great. I hope things are growing really well in your garden. If you're interested by the way about these temporary greenhouses, I'll put a link to the video. I think we did one last year where we put them up. We are on, they don't make this particular one anymore, unfortunately. So you'll have to look for some, I haven't found a very good, um, very good solution for a different one. I will just say that this one came with, this one came with all the shelving. In fact, the shelving is sort of part of the structure of it. Highly recommend looking for one with shelving included in it because that could add up very quickly. And this is just really cheap shelving. There's nothing fancy about it, but um, it, it does perfectly well. One of these has got to be on about at least it's I don't know, sixth year maybe, if not, no, maybe more, maybe even more than that. The other one, I think this is its third or fourth year. Um, unfortunately, we had a little bit of an incident with the lawnmower and the cover last year, so I could really use new covers for these. Uh, but again, I don't think they make them anymore. Anyway, check out the video for more information on these. If you're interested in something like this, I love them. They are how I harden off most of my things. I find it, they're ugly. Not going to lie, don't love the way they look in my yard. I'm very happy when they're gone for the year, but they're a huge help to me uh, in terms of hardening off and getting plants outside at an appropriate time. All right, that's it. I hope you guys are having a great day in your garden. If you found this video helpful, if you struggle with insect problems on your seedlings, uh, give this a like, and if you could subscribe, it helps me a ton, and I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.